Welcome to U.S. Immigration TV. Well, everybody is excited. Everybody is talking about it, and they're calling it Biden's amnesty. In this video, I will discuss this new proposal. As you all know, on June 18, 2024, President Biden announced a new program or process, and I quote, to ensure that U.S. citizens with non-citizen spouses and children can keep their families together. Now, this new process will help certain non-citizen spouses and children to later apply for lawful permanent residence or green cards without having to leave the U.S. Now, my office has already been flooded with calls from anxious and hopeful clients asking whether they could possibly be eligible under this new program or process. To be clear, this program is not yet in effect, so there's nothing to submit or apply for at the present time. It is not an amnesty, and not everyone will be eligible. In fact, looking at it, this process appears to benefit primarily those people who entered the U.S. without inspection or EWI or EWI uh, snuck across the border, and it's similar to an existing program that has been around for years since Obama. It was called Parole in Place, and it was for family members of members of the military who entered the U.S. without inspection. So now let's go through some of the basic eligibility requirements of this Biden proposal to see if you could possibly be eligible in the future. Remember, it's not yet in place, so don't call me tomorrow and say, I want to apply yesterday. So the basic eligibility requirements as listed in the Department of Homeland Security fact sheet are that the applicant, number one, must be present in the U.S. without admission or parole, which means really that the person entered the U.S without inspection or they snuck across the border. If you entered the U.S. on a visa, even under an assumed name, even as a crewman, then you were inspected by an immigration officer and you may not be eligible for this particular program. In fact, I've been getting calls from some of my clients, you know, I'm a crewman and I'm pursuing a provisional waiver. Uh, will this law help me? I would think that because you presented a visa, a crewman visa, or visitor visa, student visa, you entered and were inspected, you may not be eligible. The next requirement is, number two, the person has been continuously present in the United States for at least 10 years as of June 17, 2024, meaning they should have arrived in the U.S before June 17, 2014, meaning 10 years ago, and lived continuously in the U.S. since then. So if a person arrived in the U.S., let's say June 18, 2014, or they arrived in 2015 or 2020, then they would not be eligible for this program because they would not have completed 10 continuous years in the U.S. as of uh, June 17, 2024. The next requirement is the person must have a legally valid marriage to a U.S. citizen as of June 17, 2024. Now, if the marriage is bigamous because one of you did not terminate a prior marriage, then the marriage may not be valid. Or if you got married after June 17, 2024, it would not qualify. And the next requirement is the person must have no disqualifying criminal history or otherwise constitute a threat to national security or public safety and should otherwise merit a favorable exercise of discretion, meaning no crimes, no terrorism, no fraud. Now, for stepchildren of United States citizens, they must also have been physically present in the United States without admission or parole, meaning they snuck across the border, EWI, no visa, and 
have had the relationship of a stepchild as of June 17, 2024. That means that their parents should have married the U.S. citizen, of course, while they were under 18 years of age and before June 17, 2024. Now, the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, or the USCIS, has cautioned on their website that this program is not yet in effect. It's not yet applicable, and it will, and I quote, reject any filings or individual requests received before the date when the application period begins later this summer. So it's still several months away perhaps, but it's not yet in effect, nothing to file now. Now, among the factors that will be taken into consideration when USCIS decides whether to grant relief is a person's previous immigration history, their criminal history, the results of background checks, and any other relevant information as, and I quote, the USCIS has strong processes in place to identify and address potential fraud. You know, so make sure you don't misrepresent the date of your entry, how you entered. Like if you entered two years ago on a tourist visa, don't lie and say I entered you know, 15 years ago and stuck across the border. Now, as I said before, this program or process is not yet in effect. And it may be like the old DAPA, remember Deferred Action for Parents of U.S. Citizens, that program? Uh, it was enacted, then lawsuits were filed, and there could be injunctions for this blocking its implementation. Uh, I don't want to sound like uh, raining on your parade or, or uh, pessimistic, but my goal is to be honest and upfront and truthful with you. However, once this process would go into effect and you believe you may be eligible, I would highly recommend that you consult with an attorney who can evaluate your situation to make sure you are eligible, and the attorney can also assist you in applying for this immigration benefit, which would enable a few people, those who entered without inspection and have been here for at least 10 years, to be able to apply for their green card in the U.S. without having, let's say, to return to their home country on provisional waiver. I will continue monitoring the developments in this law, and I will continue making videos reporting any and all updates. So make sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe to this channel. I'm Michael Gerfinkel, and thank you for watching U.S. Immigration TV.